guys ghost here and today i have a guide on liz's tv missile how to land those shots and get the most out of this gadget this is by far one of the funnest things in battlefield 2042 at the moment so if you haven't used it then i would definitely give it a try and hopefully in this video you'll pick up some tips and tricks for landing those shots and doing the most amount of damage that you possibly can so if you guys do find this useful it would be massively appreciated if you could leave a like down below and of course feel free to leave a sub for future Battlefield 2042 content and guides. So TV missiles have been in Battlefield before and those of you who've used them in Battlefield 3 or Battlefield 4 will most likely be somewhat familiar, although there are some major differences between the old TV missile on the vehicles and the one that Liz carries. So we're gonna go over those, but for a lot of you, you may have started playing Battlefield with Battlefield 1 or Battlefield 5. You've never used a TV missile before, or perhaps even if you did play Battlefield 4, you never really played in the vehicles because in that game, the TV missile was a vehicle only weapon. So the first thing you want to be aware of is that whenever you fire this, your character is essentially just going to be stood there doing nothing. And if you get killed, your TV missile will just explode. It will disappear and you won't hit the target. So bear that in mind, you know, you don't have to always get behind cover. You see me just firing out in the middle of nowhere but you don't be firing this in the middle of a firefight, okay? It's just probably not gonna work out very well. So most of these examples are gonna be on air targets since those are usually the harder targets to hit, but of course one of the best things about Liz and her launcher is that you can hit air targets and ground targets with it. So what you wanna do when you fire the thing is basically fire where the vehicle is headed. So let's say you're firing at a helicopter, you're gonna to wanna to look what direction it's going and fire just a little bit ahead of it. Now there's two reasons for this. First of all, you're gonna to have to do less course correction when you catch up to the vehicle and you need to tweak your aim to compensate for where the target is going, but you also have a limited amount of fuel and the fuel for the missile equals range. So if you wanna take out a target, that is at the furthest range possible, you need to be minimizing the distance between that target and the missile. If you aim the missile at where the target is when you're firing, by the time the missile actually gets there, you're actually gonna have elongated the trajectory by having to bend the missile and therefore waste fuel. And of course, this depends what target you're going for. Like in this example here, if you're going for a jet, the jet is traveling much faster than a helicopter, you're going to have to aim much further ahead. If you do play in vehicles a lot and you sort of know how they can maneuver and what they're capable of, that does help in knowing where to aim, but you don't necessarily need to be a vehicle player either. Now let's talk about the boost function a little bit because that is brand new to Battlefield 2042's TV missile. So on PC, if you hold shift, it makes the missile expend fuel faster, but also travel faster at the same time. I'm not sure what the button is on console, but whatever you use to initialize the boost in like a tank or whatever, that is the same button you will use for the TV missile. So there's a trade-off, right? You expend your fuel faster, but you get to the target faster as well. Honestly, I use boost most of the time. I find that firing it and getting to the target as quickly as possible is the best way to take the target unawares and get them before they even know what's hit them. Now, of course, if the projectile is traveling slower, you have an easier time doing course correction. But if you guys haven't actually played in vehicles much and had these TV missiles fired at you, if you've watched my video from yesterday of me playing in the Nightbird, you'll notice that there are tons of different warnings. There are on-screen HUD elements to alert you that there's an incoming TV. There is a sound cue complete with the distance that the TV is from you. So it's very easy if somebody's firing a TV missile slowly towards you to just make some very erratic evasive maneuvers and get the hell out of its way. Whereas if they're using the boost function and it hits you before you even hear the sound warning, that's gonna be much more effective. So give the boost a go. Like I say, if you do fire ahead of the target and you compensate for where they're going, you should be able to boost most of the way. And if they do happen to make some crazy erratic maneuvers, then just stop boosting and try to correct for that movement. Now whilst boosting can be good, you also have to know when not to use the boost. So here's a great example of how nimble and agile the TV missile can actually be. So I boost down to try and hit this condor here. I'm completely off target with it. So I stop boosting and I actually managed to do a complete 180 turn around and catch it in the side. 
So if you do happen to overshoot your target or undershoot, you know, after all, it does come down to practice, you know, threading the needle and having that missile intersect exactly where the enemy vehicle is flying. Don't necessarily give up on that missile because sometimes you can turn it around and come back and hit the target again. Now, Liz actually has a really handy trait that allows her to see vehicles that are either hacked or damaged. So you don't always necessarily need to see a target to take a shot at it. So here's a good example of that. I see this helicopter here off in the distance that it's damaged. I'm just on this flag here, pretty much capping. So I think, why the hell not? Let's just throw a TV missile over there. And I almost run out of fuel, but just manage to snag it at the last second. So her trait is super useful, not just because you can see spotted vehicles, but you also know they're already damaged. So you have a decent chance of actually getting a kill there. Now, you only get two shots for Liz's launcher, but it does replenish over time, which is another thing that is quite controversial, I think, but it makes it very, very powerful. So you wanna make sure that you're always reloading it, right? So you're gonna fire your two shots, you're out of rounds, and then they will replenish over time. So once you're running around using your primary or whatever, once you've replenished one shot, make sure you switch over to your launcher when you can and reload it so that it's ready to go. And when a target passes overhead and you're in prime firing position, you don't have to wait for that reload. And also make sure you're not wasting her missiles either. You will get to know when a target is completely out of range. That kind of comes with the practice, but don't bother going for targets that are just way off across the other side of the map. You will run out of fuel. You can't hit those targets and you'll just end up wasting your missiles. So another factor you need to consider is the angle of attack. It's generally going to be easier to hit a vehicle from the side than it is head on or from the rear because all they need to do is swerve out the way and it's very difficult if you're behind the target to make that course correction whereas if you've got the entire side of a vehicle to hit it's just going to be way way easier and this is definitely the most important thing when going for jets now one of the difficulties with taking down the jets as well is that they're so fast if you wait for them to strafe your position and fire a TV at them as they come up out of their strafe, you're probably not going to catch them. They're just too fast and they're going to outrun your TV. So wait until they loop around, come down for a strafe again and then try to meet them with the TV head on instead. All right, to wrap this up, let's show you guys a couple of those examples in slow motion, and I'll try and explain what's going on here. So firing off the TV, I am veering off to the left because I see the helicopter's going left. All of a sudden, he switches direction to the right, so I do the same thing. And basically, it's all just about correcting the course and reading what the enemy vehicle is doing. So here again with the jet, I see he's strafing this helicopter. So there's pretty much a line between him and the heli where I know he's going to go. So I just boost all the way over there, try to guess where in that line he's going to be. And sure enough, it ends up connecting. Again, because I'm hitting him from the side, I've got much more opportunity to actually hit him than if this was a head-on. And then finally, let's take a look at this one. Once again, another blind TV. Just get it out into the open there. I spot the helicopter. He's going to the right. And then as soon as I see him veering off to the left, I just make that slight course correction. And then right as I get to the target, just bend it a little bit more. Um, you should hit it just fine. Of course, guys, like with anything else, it is just practice. But try to keep these things in mind. And hopefully you guys should be hitting helis and jets out of the sky in no time. If you have any questions about the video, just leave them down in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer them. Good luck with your TV missiles. Leave a like if you did enjoy the video and I'll talk to you guys in the next video.